All right. Seems like um, we've, people are still trickling in, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get started now. It's 6.05. So just want to say again, good evening to everyone and uh, welcome to the Summer Hill Capitol Avenue Bus Rapid Transit, or they call it the BRT uh, public meeting. And again, my name is Greg Holder and I'm with Marta, project manager for the project. Um, you can go ahead and next slide. Okay, so tonight's meeting <clears throat> will consist of um, project information presentation. Uh, and then, uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, here's, oh, sorry. There's some uh, other stuff they wanted to, to mention. So just to, so, so everybody knows uh, that your microphones have been muted tonight just to avoid any background noise. Um, and you'll be submitting your project specific questions um, and uh, we'll have a question and answer uh, session right afterwards. Uh, we'll all also address any questions as time allows. Um, frequently asked questions will be provided <clears throat> on the website as well. So if anybody wants to take down this website and um, also you can contact customer service as well at uh, customer at itsmarta.com for questions on existing service. And uh, if we miss any details during the presentation, it'll be posted on the website. All right, and uh, definitely we want to hear from you. So um, we want to know where do you live and uh, where do you work and study? And uh, if this is your first Summerhill BRT meeting, and so you can post that, those, that information actually in the chat, if you can, for a minute. And also, um, here's the address for the website again. All right, well, Again, so tonight's meeting, um, we, uh, we will definitely be welcoming council members. Right now we know we have uh, council member Smith joining us. Um, and then we will just talk a little bit of basic about what a, uh, a rapid transit system is. And then we'll have some background and uh, overview information. We'll talk about some of the segments and corridors, the route detailing, uh, typical sections, stations. And then uh, we'll just let you know that we've been outreaching to a few folks and we'll mention who those are. Then we'll have the question and answers. And then we're gonna break out into these uh, breakout rooms and talk more in detail about certain aspects of the project. So before we go any further, just like to uh, welcome council member. So council member Smith, I'm not sure if you have uh, any words. Thank you, thanks Greg, thanks everyone. Um, I am Carla Smith. I'm the council member for where most of this BRT route will run. Um, um, I put on a Facebook post the other day, and it's the truth. This has been a labor of love. And I talked a whole lot last night at the meeting in person. I won't do quite that much, but I want y'all to know that I do ride Marta. And um, now most of you probably know I'm not coming back. I'm not running for re-election. So I'm, I'm going to miss some of this, but um, um, I would ride the 830, which is 32, and then it turned into the 832 up to Hank Aaron, and then I would take the 55 up to work, and we get stuck on the bridge right up there around when, we're, when you're going over I-20, because the bus has to be in the right-hand lane, and um, we would get stuck there with all the people coming on I-20, and it was, it made you want to pull your hair out. So, um, <laughs> um, but, um, oh yeah, I guess you must. <laughs> I'm full from down here. <laughs> okay. But anyway, one of the things that I want all of y'all to help Marta with is this is going to be the first one in the city of Atlanta. I'm very proud of that too, but they're going to, traffic is going to lose a lane. So we're going to have a dedicated lane. This is a real BRT. So once that happens and all of the commuter, or the car commuters start squawking, I need y'all to help Marta by taking up for Marta and taking up for the BRT or call me because I will call the car riders and tell them that they need to get in the lane with me on the bus. So um, um, I also want to say that, um, that I've known for a while that tonight's meeting is um, going to be my last one. But one of the things that y'all are going to do that's really important to me you're going to pick out the kinds of stations and um, 
we're going to have buses that like don't because they're going to be rapid. They're they really mean rapid when they say bus rapid transit. Their buses are not going to have those hydraulic lifts. So we're not going to have that like when you stop, you know how the bus goes. And then when you leave, it goes. It's not going to have that. We're going to pull up to the station and you're just going to get on. So this, so really take a look at the stations and let us know what you think about the kinds of stations. And I think we'll some of the stations will be lift a little bit different, but they'll all be one kind of station. Like, where do we pay for the money? You pay before you get on the bus. And so I'm just really excited about it. And uh, Greg, I can't thank you enough. Ashley, and I know there's a whole big, huge team. I saw Christina is on here. And um, I just wanted to thank all of you. And then I want to thank all of the attendees because I know you are excited about bus rapid transit. Thank you all. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, well, just to uh, give a little background, you know, in support of the population and business growth in the area, uh, MARTA is going to be conducting, this is its first ever bus rapid transit, and it's going to be along the, the Hank Aaron, Capitol Avenue, um, then, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and uh, Mitchell Street corridors, and in, in essence, just bridging that gap to downtown. Um, so tonight, what we're really going to be doing is presenting to you where we are, with regards to the design of the project. And uh, we really just wanna take this opportunity to gather some input um, from you as well um, with the designs. And the, since we're still in the refinement uh, stage, this is the right time for, to, for us to come out, hear what the community has to say, um, you know, as we quickly are approaching that final design and just get any input that you may have that may um, give us the opportunity to incorporate it uh, into our design at this point. And so, um, we're definitely looking forward to our, our question and answer period at the end as well. So a bus rapid transit system, um, or they, it's a BRT is the short form. Um, it consists of premium environmentally friendly vehicles that uh, operate on the system, on the surface roadways <clears throat> in primarily dedicated lanes. Um, it's similar to the rail system with regards to that. Uh, the vehicles are equipped with signal prioritization and um, like uh, Carla was saying, they're ADA accessible because they have level boarding and that makes for faster service. Um, and uh, even though the stops, they're, they're spread out about a third of a, a, third of a mile, um, but we have, uh, they'll picking up the passengers on a more frequent basis. And of course, they all come with sheltered platforms. And so um, they're really, uh, really a premium system. Next slide. Um, so here you see that the uh, Summer Hill Bus Rapid Transit System, um, this project is one of the more MARTA expansion program projects, and um, it's going to consist of five new 60-foot articulated electric buses, and they're going to run along a 4.8-mile uh, round-trip route that spans basically from the um, Atlanta Beltline on the south side uh, up to the downtown core on the north side. Next slide. And so the route's gonna consist of 16 transit stops and they're gonna be spread out uh, a third of a mile. And um, that meets what we call the gold standard. And so um, the buses are gonna run on about 85% dedicated lanes. Um, there's some areas in the dotted areas and Ashley will talk to you later about that where they kind of go into a shared situation and they get back on the uh, dedicated lanes. Um, they do have the signal, um, traffic signal prioritization. And what that basically means is that when they're coming up on a signal, um, it, it can actually change the signal so that they can get through and that keeps them on schedule. Um, and they have the intelligent communications. So the uh, BRT buses, they're gonna serve major institutions, um, the government facilities, there's employment centers, uh, there's housing up and down along that corridor. And the route runs mainly um, past the Georgia State Arena and up around the Georgia State Capitol. And then it's gonna serve three of the major rail stations. So you've got uh, the Georgia State University Station, then going up the road further, you've got Five Point Station, and coming back around, you've got Garnett Station as well. Uh, next slide. And so some of the amenities that, uh, and you can see from this uh, drawing here or picture, um, is the level boarding that we talked about. And you can see the gentleman just stepping straight off 
the bus um, platform is 14 inches high and that's exactly where the bus is. So like, like I was saying, the bus doesn't have to come to the stop and kneel down and collect people and come back up and go. So that, that adds to um, the fastest as well as uh, ADA accessibility. Um, if you're going in on a wheelchair or anything to that effect, um, you can just roll straight in. Um, also cyclists further, uh, further towards the back doors, there's uh, hangs for the bikes as well. Um, they've got the uh, offboard collection so you can pay before you actually get on the bus and that that helps speed things up as well there's real-time information there so you'll know when your bus is coming if it's five minutes six minutes away also uh the timing for the connections to the rails as well so that you'll you'll get an idea how far out you are as well from their their timings um there's shelters with seating um right now we're kind of talking back and forth about the uh, emergency phone and how that's going to be set up but for now there's there the CTV cameras, uh, signal um, priority, like we talked about, and also the ADA accessibility. Next slide. And then these are the hours of operation. Um, right now, we're, we're trying to run as close as we can to uh, the actual heavy rail. So that way, when, when it's running, the buses are running, and then when it stops, of course, the buses will stop. Um, and so you can see the times there um, throughout the week. And the headways, are about 10 to 15 minutes for most of the day. Um, sometimes when you get into the later hours, it could spread out to about uh, 20 minutes. All right, next slide. And I'm gonna hand it over to our design team. That's uh, Ashley uh, Licklider from uh, Kimley Horn. Awesome, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Greg. We are really excited tonight to be able to share with the community the design of the shelters for the Summerhill BRT project. This is really a great component of what the project really looks like and what it's going to look like out on the street when this is operational here in just a few years. So this shelter concept really is intended, you can see from the colorization on the roof panels that we have here, we're really mimicking the amazing tree canopy that we have through People's Town and Summerhill, Capitol Gateway, all the way into to South Downtown. And the shelter itself really provides a lot of great space for folks that are using the transit service to be able to get out of the heat, to be able to get out of this rain we've had the past few days. And it really provides some nice amenities for folks. Um, back here on the back side of, of the wall here on the left, you can see that we've got some real-time information for passengers that are waiting in the station that'll let you know when the next bus is gonna be coming to pick you up. It'll also provide you with great information about when the next train is coming at those adjacent rail stations that Greg mentioned earlier. We're also going to have wonderful safety features. There'll be security cameras in the stations to, to monitor what's going on at the platform, and MARTA PD will be able to respond if there's any type of, of issues or, or problems there at the station. We also have a really great feature that's an awesome part of BRT. Far on the right side of this platform in the, the taller white and blue machine is our off-board ticketing machine. And that just really helps to keep that rapid component of bus rapid transit. You'll be able to buy your fare before you ever get on the bus, just like you would with the MARTA rail system. You know how you get on the bus now and you're trying to feed your money into the, the money machine and it, you got coins and dollars and it's difficult. This will all be able to get handled before you ever get on the bus rapid transit system. So lots of amazing amenities here at the station. You know, as, as Greg mentioned, you can see the, the yellow portion along the diagonal part of the station. That's the rub rail that helps the bus to get up close to that station so that we can have that wonderful easy on and off boarding um, for anybody that may be uh, have a stroller or have a bike, which we're going to allow on the bus or anybody um, and they may be using a cane or a walker, just make sure that it's really safe and accessible for anyone to be able to get on onto the bus here from our shelter. So let's go and talk a little bit more about um, some different components of the project. And we, we do want to make sure, you know, as Councilwoman Smith mentioned, this is a, a great project with dedicated bus only lanes throughout a, a big portion of the corridor, but that does come with a few trade offs and in some cases, particularly in downtown, that does mean we're going to lose a little bit of off street parking. I mean we don't want to alarm the community we, we do have a number of spaces about 128 that are going to be removed from the corridor, but the great news is on parallel streets and side streets we found an opportunity to add 205 new spaces that don't exist currently so we 
we think that we have well mitigated any of the potential parking that may be impacted. And as the council member mentioned, definitely get on the bus, ride the bus. That's going to be the easiest way to get from point A to point B, as opposed to driving and needing to look for parking when you get to where you're going. So let's talk about some of the different areas of the corridor. And I do want to mention that each of these areas of the corridor is going to have a breakout room when Greg and I are done with the overall presentation that you can go into the breakout room and hear more specifics about each of the different neighborhoods and how the project's going to be implemented in those neighborhoods. So in People's Town, we have three stops in the People's Town neighborhood. Our Southern Terminus, we have a stop at Haygood and another stop at Ormond. And primarily in this area of the corridor, we're going to have dedicated lanes. There is a short section of the corridor between Haygood and Atlanta where we're not going to have dedicated lanes going northbound. And we've got a picture here in another slide that we will we'll show you. And the reason that we did that as part of the design process was to be able to maintain on-street parking in that area of the corridor where we know a lot of the residents don't have access to other parking behind their house or in the alley. This is the only you know, access they have for, for parking. So if we can show the next slide, this is an illustration of what the corridor will look like after Summer Hill BRT goes into operation. This is looking from People's Town up towards Summer Hill and South Downtown, and you can see over on the right side of your screen, the bus is going to share that lane with the car that's traveling northbound. In the southbound direction, we're going to keep a bus only lane and a separate lane that will be available for cars and delivery trucks and those Amazon vans, so we'll have some separation of traffic there. But by keeping a shared lane northbound, that also allows us to keep parking over on the west side of, of Hank Aaron Drive in this area. So great opportunity to, to balance the different needs of the corridor in this area. So here's our first illustration of rendering of what the station's actually going to look like in the People's Town area. This is actually at Haygood. This would be the station that would be going northbound towards downtown. You can see how it integrates really nicely in with that tree canopy we talked about. It's going to be a great ability for the station to just blend in nicely with the surrounding community and just provide a great accessibility for folks that live right in this area to easily walk over and, and get on the BRT, be able to go downtown, connect to, to their jobs and to opportunities at the publics that we're gonna talk about soon. So just really great connections here and a really nice integration of this station into the, the surrounding community. Let's move north and talk a little bit about what Summerhill BRT will look like in the Summerhill neighborhood. So the stops in Summer Hill will be located at Georgia Avenue and Fulton Street. And this entire section of the corridor will have fully dedicated lanes. Um, so no sharing of the, the buses with other, other passenger cars, right? They'll be gonna be completely separate. And we do have some additional potential for on-street parking in this area associated with the development that's going on with GSU and with Carter. We're gonna add some parking back in on the street on Hank Aaron, which will be really nice for that development that's, that's happening around the Publix that's currently under construction. We also have some additional parking that we'll add along the Lucas, along Pollard, um, to provide access to all that great redevelopment and activation that's happening in the Summer Hill area right now. And this will show you what it will look like in Summer Hill. You can see right next to the current curbs, we're gonna change those lanes to bus only, and then cars will be traveling in, in the middle of the road. So everyone has their wonderful dedicated space. And really one of the great benefits of, of having dedicated lanes is it really helps to slow down traffic and make things a lot safer for the community and just for travel along the corridor. Okay, so here's a great rendering. This is the northbound station at Georgia Avenue. The, this is going to look a little bit different in future years. You can see a big open parking lot behind the station, but this is planned for lots of great redevelopment in the future for businesses and, and restaurants and great mixed use space where folks can live and work and play. So while this looks like a blank slate behind the station right now, this is all planned for redevelopment and great amenities for, for the community. 
Okay, so we'll move into the south downtown section of the corridor. And I want to reiterate something that Greg shared earlier. The BRT is going to provide really wonderful access just one block away from the GSU station, from the Five Point stations, and from the Garnett station. So really, really great connection to, to MARTA Rail here. You know, it allows you to get into south downtown and then to anywhere else in the MARTA system you may want to go. So we've got seven stations downtown, including stations adjacent to the Memorial and Capital intersection. We have a station by the Sloppy Floyd building, one next to the old world of Coke in Atlanta underground. We have a station that's going to be located over near the Sam Nunn and Richard Russell Federal buildings to provide great access to employment there. And then as we turn the corner and come down Mitchell, we'll have a stop at Broad, as well as a stop adjacent to City Hall. So really good coverage of downtown and really easy to walk from any of these BRT stops to anywhere you may want to go in that area of the city. As Greg noted earlier, we have primarily dedicated lanes in the south downtown area. We do have some lanes that are going to be shared with cars, and that really is intended to make sure we can still keep turning movements moving for those folks that, that are not using the BRT, and just make sure that we keep everything moving smoothly for everyone throughout this area of the corridor. So sometimes we have to do the, the trade-offs with not having exclusive lanes, and I think we've done the best to, to balance all of the different needs of all of the road users in this community, whether you're riding the BRT or driving your own car, you may be walking or, or cycling. So one of the main reasons you'll see along Washington Street is it's super exciting that we're going to have a cycle track coming in, in that area of the corridor. So to provide space for the cycle track and balance the needs of transit, we have some dedicated lanes that weren't um, accomplished there. We share the lanes for the bus along Washington Street. And in terms of parking, um, as I noted earlier, we do have some parking loss in the south downtown area of the corridor. We are going to offset that parking loss by creating some additional on-street parking along side streets and parallel streets. I'm um, happy to talk as we move into the, the breakout room if there are specific questions on parking within the south downtown neighborhood. So this is a great rendering of what BRT will look like on the MLK corridor. You can see right along the curb, we're going to have a bus only lane that will serve our stations along on MLK. We'll have three lanes of general purpose traffic, and then we'll maintain all of the parking currently existing along the, the south side of MLK. The next image is going to show you what we will look like over on Mitchell. So again, we'll have our bus only lane as well as on street parking and, and stations and then we'll have two general purpose lanes. Mitchell's obviously a little bit narrower, a little bit skinnier than what we have over on MLK. So not as many through lanes here, but definitely enough to, to serve the volume of traffic that we see in South downtown. And here's an awesome rendering of what the, the BRT shelter is going to look like in front of the Sloppy Floyd building here. Again, really great access and connection to that GSU rail station. Wonderful level boarding platforms allowing folks to really just walk on and off super easily. And as you can tell, really a great integration between the, the station and those surrounding buildings. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Greg to chat with you a little bit about the different partners that have been part of the project to date. Oh, Greg, I think you might still be on mute. You might be right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no, but thank you. Those were uh, those were excellent pictures as well, too. But um, we did. We have held um, multiple meetings with our public and private partners. Um, and the organizations, um, even the federal authorities and developers up and down along the corridor. Um, and these are just a few, just uh, some of them, just to name a few. Um, and really, we're just doing that to ensure that our design and our plans and our stop locations are in sync with um, other projects and other, other projects they have going on in the area. And um, so that was basically uh, a lot of what we're doing and we still continue to do as we are moving forward with development of the project design. So you can see the schedule here, and um, we're nearing that 60% final design milestone, and uh, we anticipate completing the uh, full design uh, next summer, summer of 2022. And then from there, we're looking at going into construction uh, after bidding it out um, early, first quarter of uh, 2023, and, and wrapping up construction and really getting ready to start BRT service 
uh, around the fall of 2024. So it's coming soon. And with that, um, I guess we'll go into any questions and, and answers. So good evening, everybody. My name is Cole Smith. I'm with the team. I'm also going to go off of, uh, um, turn my video on so you guys can see me. Um, I'm going to help facilitate the question and answer period. Um, Greg and Ashley are going to uh, answer the questions. We also have some other uh, expert uh, people on our team available to answer other questions. So um, to start, uh, the first question I will uh, pass to Ashley. It's why doesn't the streetcar have signal prioritization when this BRT will have it? That's a great question. And in many ways, it's it's always good to, to talk about, you know, how the streetcar interacts with the, the street system and how the BRT will interact. And the streetcar does currently have transit signal priority. Um, it's obviously a little bit different with some of the sections of the streetcar because it does operate in the same lane. Uh, as other general purpose cars. So sometimes it's harder to see when that happens, how the transit signal priority can help the streetcar. And that's one of the main reasons that MARTA tried to make so much of the Summerhill BRT corridor dedicated lanes is so the BRT can really take advantage of that, that transit signal priority. And what that really does is that will hold a traffic signal green a little bit longer or turn it green a little bit sooner, depending on when the bus is anticipated to, to get to that intersection so we can quickly get the bus through and keep people on their way. Thank you for that answer. Um, to cover the other streetcar question in here, kind of to clear things up and make sure that we're focusing uh, the focus uh, on Summerhill BRT, the other streetcar question we wanna make sure we answer. Um, is will the streetcar stations be upgraded to have amenities like real-time arrival, CCTV, et cetera, so that it, um, similar to those that the new shelters will have for the BRT? Greg or Ashley, feel free to, to, to tackle that one. Well, um, at, this, at this point, um, I really can't say but I do know that we are trying to um, have both of them very similar to each other. We're using uh, um, some of the streetcar stops were, were used as uh, kind of like a, a design guide when we were looking at the BRT. And then now there's been some upgrades that are being talked about for the streetcar as well, especially with streetcar expansion. So um, there will be quite a few similar amenities uh, when we get into fare collections and, and start upgrading there, those upgrades will be added as well. So you're going to start seeing a lot of the same features at both. Um, if that answers the question. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty clear. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, some bike pedestrian questions. Uh, given that this will connect to the belt line, will you uh, be able to take bikes on the BRT vehicles or will there be bike lockers at the belt line station? You will be you will be able to bring bikes on the BRT. We're, we're right now we're working on the specs, um, and we actually we were out on the Ashley and I we were out at, <laughs> on site the other day taking a look at it and just taking a look at the handicap um, and wheelchair facilities and where they're going to go. And we've talked about where the bikes are going to go, and that's kind of more at the back door boarding area, and um, just having a section for the bikes to actually be hooked up inside the BRT so you, you can ride along and then get off, get back on your bike, and get going. So yes. That's what we're planning for. And each of the stops will also have locations for you to park and lock your bike if you'd like to leave that at the stop. And additionally, at the Southern Terminus, we will have extra parking for bikes at the Southern Terminus, obviously anticipating a lot of folks may come over from the Beltline and having that great connection there is an option. So each stop will have bike parking and the Southern Terminus will have additional opportunities for you to leave your bike. Thank you. That's Great answer. Um, a question that just came in, speaking of bikes, um, it was what will the occupancy be for the bus and how many spaces will be dedicated for bikes? I'll let, I'll let you go with that, Ashley. That's a great question. Obviously, we'd like to accommodate as many bikes as we can on board the bus. 
it's always a trade-off as you know, you've noted in your question that when you accommodate bikes, you do have to take out seated areas on the bus for the bike to be able to be accommodated. So we're currently working on the specifications for the bus. The bus order will go in next year. And that's something we've been working through and talking through with the MARTA team of what that appropriate balance is. Um, between, you know, the bikes and, and the number of folks that can be seated. Certainly, the articulated bus has a lot of folks that um, will ride on the bus standing, and a lot of people are comfortable doing that, but we do want to make sure there's enough space for folks to, to sit that aren't as comfortable riding along the route standing. So it's just a balance. We're working through that, and as we have more information about the exact number, we'll be happy to share that. All right. Thank you. Um, next question. Will the fair be a regular MARTA trip product uh, yes yes the fares will remain the same so you'll be able to transfer from if you're at the rail station transfer on to uh the brt it's, it's all the same fare fantastic um another fair question this may be a little bit more uh dedicated to a station kind of question is like is the question is why is there no fence or walls around the stations and if the fares are paid before boarding, um, if the fares are paid before boarding, couldn't people just get on the bus without paying? Well, yeah, we actually uh, that we were actually in conversations about that because during the initial stages, because this is something that's going to be new, um, we're going to have to have you know MARTA police enforcement to kind of come around and just check and make sure that fares are being paid and just make sure that you know everybody's following and getting that mindset going um but yeah yeah it is it is it's open you, you, the three doors will open up you're paying before you get on and that's just part of keeping the, the transit moving at a certain pace as well all right um there's a lot of questions it seems like on uh, dedicated lanes and kind of roadway impact so i'm going to try to uh, group some of these together um this is a question more long-term planning question. It says both MLK and Mitchell streets are scheduled to be converted to two-way streets. How will the BRT dedicated lane affect this? Carla Smith's got that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thanks, we have been planning. Okay, I'm gonna speak on behalf of the city and, and, and I don't mean to be negative, but the city has been planning on turning a whole bunch of streets that are one ways into two ways. And it seems like they just never kind of get over the hump. So I really want to, let's just get this going. And then I have a feeling I'll make a, who, whoever answered that question, call me um, and we'll make a bet on whether the VR gets done first or if the two way street will happen. And I bet if it happens during all of this, then MARTA will come up with some kind of a contingency plan, but I have a feeling that this is going to be something we're going to have to deal with after the BRT has started running. So right now, I just really want to keep them focused on getting this done, and I'm really proud that we, I want us to be the first in the city because Campbellton or what's that other one that got approved in the Tiger Grant? Is it Campbellton? We're kind of in a I know that Marcy and I are kind of vying for first place. <laughs> well, yeah, there, there's one, uh, Campbellton, and, and also yeah. taking a look at North Avenue as well. Yeah, okay. So, well, okay. So, anyway, we want to be first. But whoever asked that question, just give me a call, and we'll, I'll discuss it with you. Okay. Yeah, Carla, we'll put you in touch with the person that answered, asked that question. Um, another dedicated lanes question. Um, how will you make sure cars do not go into the dedicated lane after Atlanta Avenue when going north. So this specifically speaks on where it's a shared lane and then it goes back to being a dedicated um, a dedicated lane and a um, non-dedicated lane. That's, that's, that's a multi-phased question. Um, initially, we're gonna have signage, of course, guiding people and um, enforcement where we need it, uh, Atlanta police. Um, we have been in conversations with Atlanta uh, city talking to them about the possibility of giving MARTA police that enforcement power, maybe as an initial, and um, at a later date, maybe even possibly having uh, cameras mounted onto the buses so that you can um, 
that you could actually get ticketed for, for that reason. And, you know, it comes to you in the mail later on and pay that way. But at first it's really just going to be signage and enforcement. All right. Thank you. Keep going on a dedicated uh, lane question. Is there any chance of getting actual physical barriers separating the BRT dedicated lanes? For example, on 17th Street at Atlantic uh, Station, the bus only lane sometimes has car traffic in it who choose to ignore it and drive there anyways. Um, at, at this point, based on the width uh, and of the roadway and the lanes that are currently out there, we wouldn't really be able to put uh, any type of barrier out there between the lanes. Um, it wouldn't provide enough room. Uh, you've got your bus taking up that full lane and you've got you know a couple other lanes for traffic so at this point no um you never know what could happen in the future but at this point we're, we're not planning on putting any anything there it'll just be uh, enforcement and signage all right um another dedicated lane question um will brt buses be able to record bus lane violations and send a ticket in the mail yeah that's that's what i was getting at um, if in order to do something like that, you have to pass legislation and you've got to go through some processes. So that is some conversation that is happening at this point. Um, I don't believe that that's going to be ready in time for when the BRT starts, but it could come very soon after. Um, so yeah, that is stay tuned. Yeah. Okay. Good answer. Um, and then will local buses and commuter buses use the bus lanes through South downtown? I'll, I'll actually expand it. Will local buses also be able to use the bus lanes in the other two neighborhoods along Hank Aaron Drive? Well, the, the plan is <laughs> for these, these lanes to be dedicated to the BRT. And in order for it to be dedicated to the BRT, that's how they're going to maintain getting those proper headways. The other buses obviously are going to have to get into those lanes at some point when they're making their regular stops. For example, if you're coming up um, Capitol Avenue, Hank Aaron there, there's a 55 bus and it runs pretty much along with the uh, BRT route and then it kind of veers off and it does its own thing. So in the area where it's running along, um, there's going to be times where that bus is going to get in the lane, um, hopefully not competing with the BRT bus. But uh, yeah, there will be times because it's got to just stop and make its... Um, uh, collections and, and drop-offs. Great, thank you. Um, there are a few more dedicated lanes, but I'm going to switch it up uh, so I can get my head around some of those questions. Um, there have been some questions that have been there for a while that I haven't gotten to yet. So this is a question on um, the access to other uh, MARTA stations. Will the BRT be rerouted once the five point station redevelopment is complete? Uh, there's no plans currently to reroute the BRT um, route. It's, um, it's going to be static in place. Um, so not at this point, no. Um, it will just run along the, uh, those corridors that have been shown a little bit earlier, uh, MLK, Mitchell, and, and up and down um, Hank Aaron. Capitol Avenue. Okay. Um, here's a good transit uh, signal priority question. BRT has signal priority. However, what will happen if a car tries to go through the signal with the BRT? Well, if the, what happens with signal priority, if it's going to turn the light green, so the BRT bus will be in its lane and the car will be in its lane. So if the light's green, then yeah, you can just continue moving through as normal. Um, it's not, it's not a, a priority just for the bus itself. Like if it changes it green, then all traffic that's there can go through as well. It's so yeah, to clarify that it's not a specific signal. That's just a transit signal similar to the streetcar. It's correct. a, it's, it's transit signal priority, which is affecting the, the green ball to let you right. keep walking. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. No, it's, I, it's clarifying it for myself as well. Okay. All right. Um, definitely got some good questions coming in. Keep them coming. The Q and a is a good, uh, format to do it. Also don't uh, forget. We also have a chat function. If you have other, other, um, technical questions 
or non-project specific questions for the project. It's also a good time just to take a breath and to say uh, we are going to have a survey available uh, on the website. It's available now. Um, also on the website, the presentation that um, you just saw is available for download. So feel free to open that up. Um, if you're still not sure about something, feel free to go back to that presentation. Um, we will put the uh, website chat in the chat. Uh, so it's at the at the bottom of the chat, first thing that you see now. Um, let me go ahead and do that real quick before we jump back into the Q&A. Okay, so website link is there. The, um, the survey link is there. The website or the place to download the presentation and, and all of the documents from yesterday's in-person meeting have been uploaded to the website as well. All right, back into the Q&A. Um, get some uh, parking questions. Uh, could the offset parking losses be replaced with other parking replacements, bike rentals, scooters, zip cars, instead of redistributed parking? You want to take the, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Again, we are, let's go, who's doing the slides? Let's go back one slide to, yeah. Okay. So right now we are in, I know that this has been going on for a while and y'all, this is a grant and some of, and I mean, it's got matching money and all that. It was started out as a tiger grant and they don't even call them tiger grants anymore. So this thing is like moving and moving. So, um, by the by fall of 2022 is when we need to kind of stop asking questions and then have new suggestions after we implement or listen to me like I, I'm going to be out there driving the bus after it is implemented. Um, and so some of these questions are going to be up to Greg, Ashley and Carla to make sure that we work with the uh, bicycle czar. It used to be Becky and then it was Carrie and I don't know who, I think it's Kimberly now, but we need to make sure like all those partners that are listed on there, we need to make sure that we pull um, Kimberly in because some of y'all know, I worked with Becky to do a parklet on Cherokee and it took up a, a parking place or actually what it did was it, it got really close to the crosswalk. So that is cars are not supposed to cro uh, park close to the crosswalk. So I'm sure we can find some if we just look. So y'all look too, and then get a hold of Kimberly and somebody at Marta or Greg or, or Ashley or Cole or me. And, and then, you know, and let us know where you think some parklet, bike parklets and scooter parklets could go. Cause you know, that little area before the red light for the, the site distance and all that. So those are areas where we could do it and we can work with the city of Atlanta and it won't all be Marta to have to pay for. I'll give a quick little shout out to uh, some of my friends at uh, the city, at the city design studio and the department of planning. They've been doing a lot of great um, place making uh, in existing parking spaces. If the one that Carla mentions was one of the first ones before they even had that team together. Um, but there are some great ones on Boulevard and on Ormond uh, in the neighborhood uh, that are showing off the ability to turn parking space on street parking spaces into people spaces. So, so check that those, out. Thanks Cole. And y'all just keep those thoughts coming and, and, um, and, and tell us what you think. And when you find something, Maybe we can implement it. Yeah. So we have until 7.30. I'm going to try to keep going through a few more of these questions for Q&A, and then we're going to get into a breakout session. And the breakout sessions are going to allow us to discuss some more specific questions per for each neighborhood. Um, but until then, I'm going to ask a few more questions. Another parking one, um, why the emphasis on adding or keeping all this on-street parking when this is a transit priority project? Go ahead. I, can, I can answer one. Okay, okay. y'all, when you're coming up, because I was involved with this, and we even had a public meeting about this at Georgia Hill. I know some of y'all were at the public meetings that we had at Georgia Hill, where we were deciding the route and all that. Um, if you're coming from downtown and you're on Hank Aaron, as soon as you 
and I, Cheryl is somewhere. You might want to text me, Cheryl. But as soon as you get to, there's some, there's some houses up on, it's right when you hit People's Town. It's going to be probably, I guess, right past Atlanta Avenue. There's some houses that are up on the hill and they don't have any place to park. And actually the very first house, I think it's the first one or the second one, there's um, an elderly person that's there. She's lived in that house all of her life. Um, it's a family thing where generations of people have lived there. She's in her 90s and she still drives a car and she still goes to the grocery store. And um, so we could not take that parking away. So that's where it starts to scoot us over. And then when you get down, it goes down to the Emmaus house. And then I think that's when it goes back over. So that was just one place that it was just, it caused us to have to scoot the BRT lane over. Thanks for that answer. Um, the next question is, will the route BRT route be closed in downtown? the way the streetcar is during big events. I'm also gonna add also during um, one-way rerouting for special events of MLK like they do for fleshing out uh, Atlanta United or Falcons games or other big events in downtown. You know, it's, it's really uh, funny that that question came up because we had a conversation about that very same thing. Um, and we were talking with the commissioner at ATL DOT because that is exactly it. We're building transit for this reason. It's uh, people moving. And um, when you're having large events and you have bigger masses of people, um, you want, if we need to step up the transit to move the people, that's the way to go. And that's the kind of mindset that we're trying to get, um, get people into. And it reminds like, I'm actually originally from Toronto, Canada. And so Maple Leafs, you know, Maple Leaf Gardens, they'll play the hockey games or whatever. And when they let out, it's like, a, it's, it's a mass of people. And we've got streetcars rolling, we got the subways going, you know, and you've got all these different modes of transportation. And it's unbelievable how fast it just clears everything out. In fact, you come out of there and you're looking for the transit, like, where's the next one? Where's the next one? You know, and um, there's so many people like we've got 60 foot articulated buses coming here. And they can hold so many more people. Those are those bigger buses that have that accordion look in the middle. And so you start running those. And uh, even if they want to do a contra flow lane, but at least let the BRT lane stay and go up and start collecting those people. Maybe if it's a, a let out from Mercedes Benz or, or the Hawks game or, or wherever, you'll be surprised once you got those headways going and people are getting out of there, they'll be happy and they can get to the rail stations or, or wherever their destination connections are. And um, that's the mindset that you want to get into. Um, just to answer that question. So, oh, so to answer the question in general, we're working with um, the DOT, first of all. Um, and then from there, we're gonna start talking to these uh, special events coordinators to, to, to try to make sure that they're planning and, and organizing their events to incorporate transit into their thoughts. Thanks, Greg. That's a, that was a good answer. Um, when a next question is when a car takes a right turn, will they either cross the bus lane or be in the right lane prior to turning, which will be the proper movement? Um, there's going to be a certain distance that you're going to have to get your car into the lane in order to, to make the turn. Um, we're not anticipating somebody to, to come all the way up to the intersection and cross over the bus lane. And, and it's uh, it, that might get a little wild. So um, there is a, a certain amount of distance and we'll have to make sure that that type of education is out there as well. Thank you. I only have a few more Q&A questions. So it looks like we'll probably be able to get a good um, uh, 30 minutes of breakout session. Um, will the dedicated lane sections be painted completely red? Right now, that's, the look that we've been giving in the the photos just to give people um an idea where the lane is versus where the regular traffic is we're not exactly sure if that's the direction we're going to go in um there's a lot of maintenance um when you're when you're talking about doing that um so we're, we're looking into which is the best treatment which is going to work the best um so right now there's we're still working with that um haven't come up with the finalization on it um but the thought is, is that it, well, let's say right now it's still in design. 
Okay, thank you. Um, just a few more. Uh, there's a few questions in here that I think are actually more applicable to um, the breakout session. So if I did not get your question, the breakout session will allow you to go off mute and to have a little bit more of a informal conversation. So uh, make sure that if I uh, didn't answer your question uh, that we'll answer it there. Um, let's see, have you, okay. Um, lots of filming is happening downtown, uh, closing streets for hours at a time. Will BRT have to stop for filming. I will um, say, I'm gonna take a note, thank you for pointing that out, because we might need to contact the Office of Film and tell them to not give any permits. Now, I mean, I love the film people and I know that there's a bunch of them, there's probably some on here, but I don't know if we want to be giving out film permits. Uh, I'm writing it down right now on the BRT lane. It, now, maybe in the middle of the night, I don't care. Uh, is that a, a, does that sound okay? Yeah. Because it'll, it won't be running. So they can do it in the middle of the night. So they can still use that if they want. Yeah. But film permits, and we'll, we'll give them our hours. Y'all, this is all still... Uh, anyway, but I'll give them the hours that it's running and ask them not to um, give out film permits, um, you know, during running hours. How do you say that, Marta? How do y'all talk about that? Operational hours? Yeah. Operational hours. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that, you're, you're exactly correct. That's, that's okay. Correct. Okay. I, I've written that one down. <laughs> Thanks, whoever asked that. Yeah. All right. Um, I think... I think that's probably it for the Q&As. There's a few more questions that I think would be better answered and that are very specific to downtown or very specific to um, Summer Hill. So um, we're going to switch to our breakout session, um, our breakout session portion of the of our program. Uh, so um, our team is breaking into three different groups. And we're going to be available to answer additional questions and discuss the project details. We also have some more materials um, broken out by neighborhood in each of these bro uh, each of these breakout sessions that we'll be able to share via PowerPoint. Um, and all these uh, all these documents are also online at the on the website as well, but not broken out by website or not broken out by neighborhood. Um, three the three breakout rooms will be open for the next thirty minutes. Um, and there's one breakout room per corridor segment. So there's a South Downtown one, a Summer Hill one, and a People's Town one. And the way that we'll do this, and I'm going to put this message in the chat, is that the message in the chat, we're gonna um, ask you to participate in the breakout meeting room link with the breakout meeting room link. What that's going to do is that is going to actually take you out of this webinar and into a new Zoom meeting. That new Zoom meeting will then be, we already have some people in there, um, will be, we'll give you, we'll ask you the question, which breakout room would you like to join? Um, so once you get in there, you'll be able to join a breakout room. If, you're, uh, if you have any technical difficulties, use the chat function. I'm going to remain in this room uh, for the time being, um, but people can go ahead and join the breakout room now if you'd like. I will also post in the chat the Summer Hill BRT survey link. So it's a direct link from today um, to the survey. If you are not able to join the breakout room and you wanna go straight to the survey, um, I've just put in the chat the Survey Monkey link for the survey. So um, there's two links in the chat, one to move out to the breakout rooms and one to go to the surveys. Um, this also will conclude our um, recorded portion of the video um, and our live stream that is happening on YouTube Live. Um, so if are there are any direct questions for anybody on those channels, please use the website to reach out to Greg or the rest of the team on the website. Um, does our team have any more questions? Carla, would you like to say anything in closing? Ashley, Greg? Of course, you know I can't like pass up a chance. To I talk. had to. 
I had to give you one more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And y'all can call me too. Um, and I'm going to give you, I'm at home. Like I'm sure a lot of y'all are. Um, I'm going to give you my home phone number. It's a landline and, um, and I'm using it as my desk phone here at the house. So grab your pen, 404-627-8. Three one three, and then my office number is 404-330-6039. And um, if you leave a message there, I can retrieve the messages. You can't get me at the house, but y'all, I am doing this when I'm in meetings. If any of y'all remember old home telephones, I've got a <laughs> book right here. So, um, so, um, um, so if it's busy, that means I'm in a meeting. Um, but yeah, call me if y'all have anything for the city too. Carla, is it okay if I put your number in the chat? Yes, please do. It's 404-623-8313. 627-827-8313. And then the office is 404-330-6039. And that's not my cell. It's an old landline. What, was those last, what were those last four, Carla? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, six zero three nine zero three nine okay so if y'all need to get in touch with Carla there's her her numbers we only have 20 people still in the in the meeting 20 attendees so some people probably have already moved on to the uh the breakout rooms um I'm gonna stay on here um for the uh for anybody that has any questions about how to do that um and then I'll be closing this out probably uh at 7 10 just in case the last 10 to 15 people on here are are just uh you know eating dinner and not paying attention anymore so <laughs> uh greg or ashley anything any last minutes for the last 10 or 10 or so people i, I mean i just like to thank everybody for coming out those that, that are left and um we're definitely going to go into the breakout rooms we're going to answer any more questions but these questions have been great um th this is the kind of uh input that we were looking for from the community things that you're uh you know thought provoking and juggling you know thinking about the movies and sets like that some of the stuff that just comes up you're, you may or may not be thinking about so we have to have that stuff incorporated in our designs or, or ask the right questions just to make sure that we've got all bases covered so this is awesome i appreciate everybody thank you so much for taking time out to join us tonight we really appreciate your feedback